It was just a nice family business that continued to grow. I loved what I was doing and felt I had the best job in Madison and uh, always will think that. Sub-Zero is successful because it took risks. If you don't take risks, you're probably not going to get very far. I've told different people, I said that they pretty much build a Cadillac of their own refrigeration and that's about what it is. This is the story of two classic American companies. A dream that began with one man who recognized a need and possessed the spirit and drive to see it through. That man was Westy Bakke. Although his formal education ended after eighth grade, Westy became a voracious reader at an early age. He taught himself skills in electronics, mechanical engineering, and refrigeration. In 1926, Westy Bucky moved his family to Madison in search of better opportunities. Westy soon found work in the refrigeration field, but as the depression of 1929 hit, work became scarce. He took on side jobs, including work as a refrigeration consultant for renowned architect Frank Lloyd Wright. He soon recognized a need for reliable home refrigeration and began experimenting. Word spread of Westy's success with his experimental freezer units. He saw his opportunity and hired his brother, Charles, to construct wooden shells in Rice Lake. He then shipped them to Madison where Westy and his son Bud completed the units. As World War II came to an end, the economy started booming and so did Westy's business. In the summer of 1945, he decided to incorporate choosing the name Sub-Zero for the below zero temperatures his units produced. My grandfather would go out into the plant once in a while and jump up on a sheet metal table and give the employees a uh, speech about what it meant to work at Sub-Zero and what Sub-Zero is all about. And, and basically the theme of every one of his speeches or talks uh, centered around the quality aspect of the product. It just so happens Bud was studying engineering at the University of Wisconsin Agricultural School. Bud's newfound knowledge and ties with the university proved invaluable. Well, back in earlier times, we used to build lab cabinets for universities. We built one cabinet that would run on a steady run 52 below zero. By 1951, Westy decided to create a separate research and development department. He put Bud at the helm. And in 1954, the first prototype of the Sub-Zero built-in was introduced. When the uh, built-in refrigerator was first uh, talked about and designed and engineered, uh, the story I heard is that Mr. Bakke had some reluctance about uh, going that direction. So some of the employees went over to visit with his mother or asked her help to convince uh, Mr. Bakke to think that the uh, built-in refrigerator was a good idea. Throughout the late 50s, Sub-Zero expanded its marketing of the built-in line and continued developing industrial refrigeration. Suburban housing developments of the 60s introduced modern home decor. The built-in line fit that design perfectly and became Sub-Zero's largest selling model. The 70s ushered in an era of advancing technology with management of Sub-Zero in Bud's capable hands, Westy felt it was time to retire. Three years later, he passed away. The company he created and nurtured would continue to grow. Well, he was a leader. He, um, he was a great reader. He loved to read. And um, he just uh, was driven to be successful. I know the day I started, Westy Bach, he said the door is always open and got something bothering you. If you want to talk or business or whatever, you're welcome to come in. Bud continued in his father's footsteps, but his health was becoming an issue. So he hired longtime business associate Homer Price as sales manager. Homer agreed to run the company should something happen to Bud. 
sales were skyrocketing. A new built-in plant was established to handle the increased volume. Development of an overseas market had begun, and a new leader was coming up the ranks. Jim worked um, summers at Sub-Zero uh, on the line. He'd get up in the rafters and paint, and he'd go outside and paint the building, and whatever needed to be done, he'd do it. He'd work on the line. He did a lot of work on the line. He knew what things were, what was going on. When he graduated from the university, he worked for Oscar Mayer, and then Bud's health turned for the worse, and uh, he wanted, them, wanted him to come back to Madison. Jim was in place to become manager of a new plant that was under development in Phoenix. As construction began, Bud's health deteriorated. Two months before the plant's completion, Bud Bucky passed away in May of 1981. Bud had people, factory employees, come out, go hunting with him, and he wasn't beyond associating with anybody, and everybody had that feeling. As a little girl, I would ask my dad if we were rich, and he would look at me and he said, oh, we're very, very rich. But it's not because we have money, it's because we have each other. And that was the essence of who he was. In 1984, Jim was invited to join the board of directors. Then, in 1989, he took the reins that his father had held before him. Jim took Sub-Zero into the next decade with new concepts, such as integrated refrigeration and wine storage units. Just before the turn of the century, he made the decision to acquire Wolf Gourmet. It wasn't long before Sub-Zero and Wolf together became kitchen soulmates. Wolf has been an extremely important strategy to the overall success of these two brands. Back in the 90s, Sub-Zero really hadn't grown much at all in that 10 year period. And we knew we had to go and become a full line if we were going to remain competitive in the marketplace. And we've always done fairly well in the UK and England, and, but now we're expanding into other parts of Europe and Asia, Pacific Rim, and even into Moscow. So expanding globally is a good opportunity for both the Southern and Wolf brands. The dynamic and innovative leadership of the Bucky family is at the forefront of Sub-Zero and Wolf's success and will continue to be well into the future. We are always going to be on the leading edge of new products and innovation. And that's how we've fueled our growth in the past. And I see no reason why it won't fuel our growth in the future.